Good morning. I feel really good about today. I don't know what it is, but I just feel really good. When I started working, I always found Mondays to be a little bit tricky just because there's no flow of, I did this yesterday, I'm gonna do it today kind of thing. But like today, after all the work I've done yesterday, I know exactly what I'm gonna work on. So I don't feel as like rigid, if that makes sense. Last night in bed, I thought of the shape of a dress that I want to make. And I'll talk a little bit more about it later, but um, I really want to drape that today. Before that, however, I'm going to work on this corset. I also thought about like what I wanted to line it with, yada, 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 figured it all out. So I just have to cut it, put it together. I'm going to start sort of taking apart the fringe and I think I'm going to try to find a way to sort of keep it all together. So yeah, the fringe bit is going to be very tedious. So it'll be a thing that I can do when I'm not feeling too creative and I just need to sit and like pull things apart and sew it onto the bodice. Other good news, while I was washing this, I also washed a part of the batting and it washed really well. I washed it in 90 degrees because it's really gross. Um, but yeah, it barely changed like the texture. This is the unwashed one and this is the washed one. I need to iron it, but apart from that, you really can't tell. So I'm gonna wash the rest of the batting so I can start working on it. Um, I have like a bunch of ideas of what I would wanna do with the batting. I was gonna do a jacket. I kinda wanna do a jacket dress. Um, with like buttons down the middle and like a funky sleeve. I might do trousers. I might just do a skirt. I don't know, but I'm gonna get really creative with the textures of the fabric that I'm gonna use for this collection. I've also changed my idea. I'm gonna not do just gold. I'm gonna do white and gold um, because I have a very specific design that I want to make. So I'm gonna try to incorporate white in different aspects of the collection. Really feeling like it's coming together. I'm just really excited. I'm going to get to work. It is 10 a.m. and we'll see where I am in a couple hours. <laughs> So this is the kind of quilting that I was talking about and adding the batting on the inside creates a little bit of depth that I quite like. Um, I was, I'm was i using white thread because I don't have gold thread and then you go buy at some point. I don't mind the white thread though. Obviously it'll be parallel and everything. I just wasn't bothered to mark it. I don't know, I think the white thread adds like a nice little touch. Um, I might do a mix, we'll see. Maybe like <gasps> one direction could be all in white and the other direction could be in gold. That could be fun. That could be fun. I'm now gonna cut the bodice. what the bodice is looking like. It just has so much structure. I think the interfacing is very strong. Maybe a little bit too thick, but that's fine. Um, yeah, this is what she's looking like. Um, since there's so much interfacing, I'm not going to bone this. Also because boning on a curved seam is a pain in the ass. Um, so this is the shell um, and this is the lining. So this is what my body's gonna touch this part and it's gonna be sewn together. Um, I think this is where I have to pause now because so I want the frills to start at the top and that has to be in the seam between the lining and the fashion fabric. So until I put all of the fringe, sorry, on this fabric, I can't go on. So I'm going to iron the seams open to make sure that everything stays nice and flat and beautiful, as the gun says. I think I'm going to get to draping the second piece, which is really exciting. It's so nice working when you know exactly what you're doing because you don't stop and think. And so things like go by so quickly. It's like I, I did this whole thing in an hour.
draped. Um, I don't know if you can tell these blue dots is how I want the shape to be. I don't think it'll stay up that way. We're gonna have to see. I might have to put some sort of metal structure in it. I really like draping. One of the uh, one of the best things I've learned in fashion school, I think, is how to drape. Um, I think it's so much fun. I think you can really visualize what you're doing. And this dress form is quite close to my size, so it's quite easy to make things that fit me quite well. I'm now going to true the pattern. I've marked all the lines, and a line is not a line until you draw the ruler. So I redraw all the lines with the ruler, with the straight ruler, and my French ruler, my curved French ruler. And then I'm gonna add seam allowance, and then I'm gonna cut it out, and then I'm gonna pin it back together to show you a little bit what the shape is meant to look like. And I have time today, so I think I'm gonna make a muslin and then I'm going to start drawing where I want the designs to be. Hello, I have reached a point where my scissors aren't working very well and I'm going to show you. It gets caught. Not ideal, right? Um, I used to be able to use scissors for about like nine months before they went bad, but this is the first time I've been doing fashion design full time and using my scissors every single day. So these are getting a downgrade. And I've got other ones that are newer. I think I got this one in September. So it's lasted me about four months. Um, obviously it's not ideal to have to keep buying new scissors every four months, but I think professional fashion designers have a few pairs of shears that they get professionally sharpened every once in a while. I cannot really afford professional sort of tailored shears because they're very expensive. I'm going to show you what it sounds like. Brand new. They feel very light as well. So these sort of open and close very easily. These are a bit heavier to do that. And to distinguish them, I am going to put tape. Oh, I forgot to mention, I use Fisker's classic. I think these are 22 inch, these are 25 centimeters. Um, they're bigger than the ones that I used to have, which were a little bit smaller. So these are the ones that I used to have. These are the ones that I have now. Fisker's, if you want to sponsor me, I go through your scissors like there's no tomorrow. Really, really great fashion designer scissors. So the old ones get a piece of tape, which means I know that they are no longer my primary scissors, which also means that I can use it for the things like cutting paper or plastic. These new ones, I'm not allowed to use it on anything other than fabric or else I can easily damage them. The worst thing you can do to your scissors is when you have a pin that's in your fabric and you cut through it with a lot of force because that puts an indentation on the blade and that will permanently damage your scissors and you basically can't really use them anymore. So something they have to be really careful with, but yeah, Fiskars would highly, highly recommend. Pattern is looking good. This is the back. It has, you know what the shape really reminds me of? Um, the dress that, I don't know the name of the character, that somebody wears, it's like a butterfly dress in one of the Hunger Game movies. I know that Crescent Shea recreated the look and I, the shape really reminds me of it. I was getting inspiration from a Ochawam, which I will include a photo. I really, really like Mount Fuji. I actually love Mount Fuji. There is a film that is the Meidante Konan film where, spoiler alert, this really old man owns a house on the top of a mountain and he has a direct view of Mount Fuji and it's beautiful. These developers build a tower right between him and Mount Fuji. The building is built right in the middle of what he would see as Mount Fuji. And so he goes and kills all the people who were involved in the building of the building. And at the crime scene, he takes that ochawa and turns it upside down. So it's a small bowl that you put rice in and you like eat out of in Japan. It has a very specific shape. And he takes one, turns it upside down and then smashes it in half with a chopstick. So the upside down ochawa looks like Mount Fuji. Does that make sense? I'm gonna try to get photos so you guys can visualize what I mean. But I like the idea of using a traditional Japanese dish, not like food dish, but bowl to represent a Japanese mountain. So that's what this dress has been inspired by in terms of the shape. What I'm planning to do is take the dress and then cut it in different places. And then I'm going to put 
put it back together i'm going to put gold piping in between all of the seams to make it look like you know the japanese tra tradition where you take a broken piece of ceramic and you put it back together but all the seams are highlighted in gold that's what i want to represent in this dress it has so many elements to it but i love that it has a lot of story and a lot of relations to my childhood in Japan, which watching these movies and also Mount Fuji. I love Mount Fuji. Kintsugi, so it's called Kintsugi and that's what I want to represent in this dress. And I thought it'd be really, really fun. I think I'm gonna work on the piping today. Um, I'm going to finish cutting the pattern out and I think I'm gonna put it on and, not put it on, I'm gonna put it on the dress form to show you guys what it looks like. <laughs> I'm gonna grab some lunch and then we're gonna make a muslin and see what it looks like. I do wanna make as many changes as I can before I cut it out in muslin so I can reduce the number of muslins to make. So I'm gonna revisit this after I've eaten. Fitting number one doesn't feel too great. Um, it's very tight. So here are a few of the alterations that I'm gonna make. First and foremost, I'm going to cut the neckline to be lower. I'm also gonna cut this side seam to be three quarters of an inch lower because I'm gonna add a sleeve. I'm gonna re-sew the side seams but with a quarter inch seam allowance rather than a three quarters inch seam allowance. Just let it out a little bit. I think I'm gonna add some horsehair braid the bottom in hopes that it's going to create a rounded shape. Ow. Stepped on a pin. Right. I like the shape though. If I could find a way to make it stand out, I'd like the shape. A lot. I think I'm doing it. I think this is what I'm what I'm going for. It's a little bit short, so just a heads up. Basically, this is what it's looking like. <laughs> so weird. I love it. Okay, so we've put boning in here and it's worked out well. Horse hair braid at the bottom. Very fun shape. I think it needs to be like two inches longer at least. This is it. This is what I'm going for. <laughs> I am off to see a show once again. Um, I think it's called The Book of Dust. I've never heard of it, but I'm going with a friend. This is the outfit. I'm going to rewear these summer dresses during the winter because um, I didn't get to wear them a lot. I think I've worn it. I've worn this dress once, which is sad. Anyways, so this is what it looks like. Ah! Um, and this lovely blazer with a really cool scalloped um, detail. My grandmother gave me something that she used to wear. You can't see any of the outfit. And I'm going to be wearing them with these leather boots. I'm pretty sure these are 10 years old, which is impressive. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.